seem to have forgotten that I am a woman. But when I do a lot of makeup, people are always like, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. Hi. Yesterday I wore, I like put on makeup for like the first time mm-hmm. in like a while. And I was FaceTime with someone there. And we were talking about like business shit. And then they stopped in the middle. They're like, you look really nice today. I'm like, yeah, fucking put on makeup. I put first. on makeup, right? <laughs> I wish I didn't have to wear makeup. My skin yeah. is such, it's shitty. Like my nose is always kind of red. And like you could run a fucking car off the grease. Oh my God. Off dude. of my face. But I'm it's team better. sweat. That's like, I feel. <laughs> team sweat. Yeah. I have like this cool, it's like this Revlon um, volcano ball thing that oh, you rub shit. on and absorbs all the oil. Oh. And without like fucking up your makeup. Because like I used to get those like oil absorbent yeah, sheets, yeah, but yeah, they yeah, would yeah. spread over the makeup. Yeah. This doesn't fuck with your makeup. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I don't really wear um, foundation anymore either. That's a big thing. Mm. I wear like a tinted BB cream. Oh, it's L'Oreal. It's fucking tinted green, so it gets rid of the red tone. Yeah. <laughs> my red ass nose. I like do that for like bags under my eyes, like you put the orange or whatever. Or the to, yellow, like, yellow I think, color. Yeah. But anywho, <laughs> it does work. It does. I was like, oh wow, it does actually work. Right. Welcome back, everybody, to House Hope Podcast. I am your host, Ani Moosh, and I am welcoming on very new friends, Aaliyah Janine. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you for coming on. Um, you, I've said this before podcast, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, like you've come here a ton of times to do other people's podcasts. Yes. I always sit in because you're hilarious. <laughs> and I know you from comedy and like seeing you at the stand and stuff like yeah. that. And I'm happy that you're able to come yes, on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this podcast? About? <laughs> I know. It kind of just like uh, morphs. Yeah. I, f- I still feel like tw- I'm like, this is episode 19. Mm-hmm. And it's st- that's still new, I feel. Oh, it's very new. You know? Yeah, you're still figuring things out. Yeah. And, yeah. So far, I've like talked to a lot of different types of people, mm-hmm. a lot of comics, a lot of people who I think are artists mm-hmm. and who like do physical art and that kind of stuff too. Mm-hmm. And then I've randomly had, it, I, this wasn't planned, mm-hmm. but I've had a lot of healthcare professionals on. Oh, that's awesome. Um, For 19 episodes, I think I've had like three. Wow. Um, Yeah, or like people who can like speak about the brain or like health in some way, which mm-hmm. I just think is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, And to bring into like <laughs> this uh, realm, <laughs> this circus that yeah. we are in. <laughs> Called life. <laughs> I I mean, like, fucking comedy. Like, I just feel like uh, the clown all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a comic anymore. I don't do stand-up anymore or anything. Yeah. But, like, I just feel like I'm in a different world than... Than everyone than else. Than everybody else. Doing comedy. No, that's that's very true. I mean, I've been in... Um, I've had many professions. Yeah. Um, and each, like, industry, it is, like... They are their own little words, mm-hmm. worlds. Um, like, when I went to school to be a cop and, and I did... You know, I was a private eye... And I so fucking cool. And I used to be an armored car driver. I used to do security and, and stuff like that, loss prevention, like that. Like they have a whole like police culture, you know, yeah. you know, security, like it's a whole <laughs> different fucking culture. And then and then I go into stuff like porn where that's like a whole its own <laughs> own little weird world. And then comedy is like it's no different. Yeah. Even like just bartending or, you know. Who has the places. worst mental health practices out of all of them? Oh, I um, honestly <laughs> probably cops. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly kind of expected that. A lot of <laughs> yeah, like all of those. Um, they like to think that you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, we all like to think that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. That's the problem with thinking. <laughs> I say that like with comics all the time, like when we're talking about like accountability and things, mm-hmm. like reading people or you know, like social situations and like. It's your job to read a room. Like, you, you know, you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Like you, you get up on stage every day and you mm-hmm. do that. And it's so funny, like, how that's not translatable to, like, so many other people. It is. Um, well, a lot of other people, too, they don't, like, get up and speak in, in front of people. Yeah. That's li- literally one of, like, the biggest fears that, that humans have that and being naked in yeah. front of people. So and I've done both very comfortably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a little bit of a sociopath, so maybe that's. Is why. But yeah, yeah, there's definitely been because I host an open mic. I've Mm -hmm. been hosting it for a couple of years and I love it because I also like help refer people, you know, but I I love the whole process of of seeing people, 
you know, the first time they get on stage compared to like the 10th time that they've yeah. gotten on stage and, and, you know, and how they, they learn how to do that. But some people don't, you know, some people yeah. completely ignore everyone in the room and that can be, um, why do you think that is? Like, I, I feel like obviously you come across people mm -hmm. who you see do jokes mm -hmm. for a number of years mm -hmm. and like they maybe don't feel like they need to change. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Probably because they're not changing their personal life. <laughs> <laughs> Things that they but need to. But it's like, how do you, I, th I've had this conversation all, like all week. <laughs> <laughs> but you're curious about it. This it's is good the to theme ask. of the, my fucking week for some reason <laughs> is like people are honestly afraid of stepping out of their comfort zone and growth. And mm -hmm. like, why do you think that is? Um, well, insecurities a lot of times. Um, yeah. and, and change is hard, especially yeah. changing changing your um your behavior and stuff like that like you can't you can't change like your character but you can change your behavior mm -hmm. and a lot of times um people will feel shame mm -hmm. shameful for the types of ways that, that they have behaved um definitely embarrassed you know yeah. i have definitely <laughs> been embarrassed by some of the ways that yeah. i have behaved but the best way is to just acknowledge it own up to it and then move on mm -hmm. and if and that's like that's the hardest part is just being able to accept that hey we're none of us are perfect we all do dumb shit you know we all um we've all done horrible things to people out of, out of insecurity and, and just like how we were raised you yeah. know that there's so many different factors when it comes with that but a lot of people just lack self-awareness yeah i was uh, i had like a friend here last night and we were just talking about how i i feel drained of any energy that I have for people who don't have any um, self-awareness mm -hmm. or feel like they need to be any more than they already are. Because yeah. I, like, and I mean, I know not everybody has this practice where, like, they get up and fucking, like, actually think with their own thoughts for a little bit. Before yeah, they yeah, start, before look at their phone. You know, yeah. like, I know that's, that's something that I've, like, worked into my daily life, and mm -hmm. that has been really hard, and, like, I mean, I highly recommend, but like you feel, oh, I, I definitely do it because I notice if I ever go on my phone before, yeah. like I wait an hour, like I walk my dog, you know, I meditate, I like especially meditate and yeah. then I go on because if I look right away, I'm going to be angry about something for no apparent reason. Yeah. But it also sucks because most of our phones are our alarms as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I mean, I definitely look at my phone, but it's like I, I just don't worry about the world uh, until a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. Because things <laughs> are like... And I mean, granted, there is a war going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 but like you know uh, what I right. mean. Like yeah. in terms of, I um, if I don't, uh, if you don't put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah, you put on somebody. Then else. you know what I mean. Like, and I just felt like for a really long time, I'm gonna be thirty in two months. Yeah. And I feel like up until this year. Mm -hmm. I put on everybody else's oxygen mask on first, mm -hmm. and then I finally am putting my own on, and, and people are like, "What the fuck? fuck? Yeah, what? 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 What?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm just, You're I'm, ha I'm happy though. What? You yeah. know, like, so I don't know. Have Have you gone through? Oh, some, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is it like a? Is it a theme, or is it just like through life? Like that shit is like. Um. Well, you've definitely like I've acknowledged that type of thing, but I never really did anything about it for for years because mm -hmm. it's just like that's your comfort zone because that's yeah. it's it's like a toxic relationship. It's talk, you know, how you were raised and stuff like that. How I was specifically raised, it was yeah. just like yeah. constantly take care and make sure everyone else is okay. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, it wasn't until you know uh when i had cancer <laughs> i was like Dude. oh i need to not yeah. do this anymore and then you know there would be certain times like specific times that i would stand up but for the most part it was like i just let it continue and i was like i'm not going to do that anymore and i definitely definitely lost some friends yeah uh, because of that and um which sucks gain, right gain, yeah because you you want to <laughs> think that you have like these really close and, and personal relationships with people, not even like intimate, you know, but just like good friendships. And all of a sudden you realize that, oh, like you were just using me for this or this, or mm. you didn't respect me in this way. And a lot of that has to do too, like you have to have respect for yourself and, and you know, and self-esteem and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Because people are going to treat you the way that um, that you treat yourself. Yeah. And I've always been kind of a degenerate fuck <laughs> <laughs> most of my yeah, life. Same. You know what I mean? Even yeah. when I try, even when I try to like be good, like I was still Dude, just same. an asshole. Like I mean, I've been in therapy for like five years mm-hmm. now, and it's the best thing I ever did. Yeah, therapy's great. Like it's the best first move I made for myself, like ever, and it change my world like it introduced me to like Al-Anon and like all the shit Mm -hmm. like you know what I mean and I realized through that time that people just ask if I'm going Mm -hmm. and then like that's the end of it but like they don't do anything for themselves like at all Mm -hmm. like you know and then you're like wait this person is like really checking in on like my mental health which is kind Mm -hmm. but like what are you, you doing? Do, yeah. to, like, you yeah, know, it's, a, it's those codependent relationships. Yeah. A lot. yeah, I've had a lot of codependent yeah. relationships. Dude, same. Like, I've had, I've had friends who now we're cool, mm-hmm. um, but that are. I, I struggle with like saying addict. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. I struggle with saying addict because I know when someone tells me after like a while, when if they're actually clean or mm-hmm. trying to be clean or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do I call them a recovering addict? They're always kind of an addict, yeah. right? Like, yeah, once an addict, always an addict. But there's the recovery um, addict and recovery, recovery addict. Yeah. That's that's kind of like... Appropriate. Lo- yeah. I'm yeah. not trying... Like, he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I not be like disrespectful. He knows I'm not... Well, I don't give a fuck if I offend you, but also he knows I'm trying not to turn around to offend me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Whatever. But at the same time... I'm like, what, that, I see that in so many other people now, like, those Mm -hmm. behaviors. Now that I'm able to identify and, like, validate, like, okay, I was right when you were lying about this, this, and this, Mm -hmm. and, like, I had to literally fucking break into your house, make sure you're alive kind of shit. Like, you know what I mean? The gaslighting is strong with addicts. Oh, (laughs) my God. I mean, like, I, I, shout out to fucking (laughs) Becky, who recommended of the book Codependent No More um, by Melody Beattie. My therapist fucking legit, I kid you not, the first session I ever had, she, she, she suggested that book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, she lent me it. I lent it back to her mm-hmm. because I didn't read it. And fucking, it took me five years. To finally read it. For, yeah, just a friend to be like, um, this happened in your life now and you need to fucking read this book mm-hmm. and you need to get to know that you're a codependent. <laughs> you're an asshole, but you're also a codependent and it's okay and you just yeah. need to know and like yeah. identify like those things. So, Acknowledge it. Like what are, I mean, I know what they are, but like you, someone who's a professional, like that knows behaviors and things yeah. like. I'm also, I also know drugs. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are the signs of a narcissist in disguise, in your opinion? Oh, pretty much everyone we know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, us right now, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but still. Um, a lot of them are very charming and, um, and they do give you that that feeling that they um, that they are trustworthy, and they'll do little things to show you that they are trustworthy. So that way, when they're not, you yeah. know, being honest, it's easier for them to get away with it. Also, gaslighting, because especially when it comes with a narcissist, mm-hmm. they sometimes they don't even give a fuck. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, where they will just. Gaslight, gaslight you and be like, no, no, this is not what's happening. You're crazy for thinking that. Why would you think that they always like to play the victim too? It's like, why would you put that on me? I would never do that kind mm-hmm. of thing. I'm a good person kind of thing. I've noticed yeah. too when people are like, I'm a good person. I'm like, you normally aren't a good person. Yeah. <laughs> Most good people don't have to say, I'm a good person. Right, right. And you know what? The fucked up thing is like I used to say that like a yeah. while you know I re- me I can too? recall me saying that shit mm-hmm. and then I went to therapy and you're like I am not that great of a person. It also <laughs> took me five years to realize I have an anger problem. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up, like I made a uh, fucking Instagram post the other day that like, mm-hmm. it was <laughs> captioned like I used to think I was the only Aries without an anger problem. <laughs> Dead ass, like really <laughs> thought that was true. I'm like, I'm Zen. I do. Ba, 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 I'm ba, Zen ba. as fuck. I don't know what you're yeah, talking I don't know about. You're talking I'm not about. Angry. Yeah. Meanwhile, like I'm the first one. I'm like the bulldog. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> something's just going on. Stuff. Yeah, that lack of um, emotional control. I had that. I've um, been practicing that myself. 
Yeah. Well, um, I can handle like like little petty things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like certain little things. But um, yeah. I mean, it does take. I ain't me no weak ass a- bitch. But yeah. like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there has been some times where I'm like, okay, now yeah. I'm just gonna breathe. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna breathe, and uh, we're gonna come back to this in like five, ten minutes. Yeah. And see if I feel the same way about it, and I've been much happier because I've been doing that. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, yeah, for the fact that I haven't like murdered people is actually really yeah. impressive. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I um, I used to work with this lady that um, she was like kind of like my mentor at work, mm-hmm. and I was just like venting to her one day, and she's like, I started practicing mindfulness and she like tried telling me about it whatever this was maybe like seven or eight years ago at this mm-hmm. point. I didn't understand that until like a week ago <laughs> honestly mm-hmm. where I like I was clenching I was for no reason yeah and I'm like what I can I can relax like I don't need to be clenching all the time mm-hmm. like like why am I always well that's yeah. also like were you ever phys- physically abused as a child yeah. Okay. So that has a lot to do with that because I was uh, mostly majority by my stepmother, but um, it's like the fight or flight syndrome. Like I have yeah. a perpetual of that because there'd be yeah. times like we'd just be sitting watching TV and she'd throw fucking like yeah. a book at me kind of that's thing. Fu- yeah, that's so I was constantly on my, fucking like, do I need to fight somebody kind of thing? My shit wasn't like that. I mean, like yeah. you, I had, I'm not going to like whatever. It wasn't ever an adult or anything like oh, that. That was okay. physically abusive, mm-hmm. but you know, but like I had instances where adults were angry or you know like i i I was a my dad's 15 years older than my mom Mm -hmm. and he has three other kids okay and they're all older Mm -hmm. and like my my mom's only so like Mm -hmm. there's just a lot going on there (laughs) and my parents are foreign also (laughs) you know so there's just there is a lot of clenching Mm because you don't know like you know sometimes and uh, i my parents are very loving and they're still together and all Mm -hmm. that shit but like uh, that there's still shit, mm-hmm. you know. There's still like trauma that has occurred in my life that I, until I did mushrooms, <laughs> didn't realize. I was like, oh, that's yeah. why I resent this. Yeah, you yeah. know, mushrooms are helpful for for that kind of thing too. Yeah, if you really like use them for that. <laughs> yeah, I um the first time I did mushrooms was when I moved to New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so not that long ago. Yeah, like and I just. I love mushrooms, but like I've been, I've tried to respect the drug. Mm-hmm. Like oh, you should always respect your drugs. You yeah, should, you, you could do drugs, just don't let the drugs do you. Yeah, That's what how my, how to do? Dr- <laughs> <laughs> That's <what> my mom taught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you have a podcast about this, so I yeah. trust what you say. <laughs> um, how to do drugs <laughs> with Leah Janine? Yes. Um, but I. I kind of like learned this from Irish and from Sam Buck because mm-hmm. they were kind of like my shamans mm-hmm. and and like to if you go in with intention then you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And I had a fear of psychedelics for like a really long time. Oh yeah, a lot of people do. <laughs> and I, it's funny because it's not a coincidence. Obviously, like when I moved to New York and like a, a lot of things, in my life shifted around, and I was actually free to do whatever I wanted to do. To like, like live I, how you wanted to I live. I felt comfortable doing them. Mm-hmm. And like all I wanted to do was a little bit so that I could like see some cool stuff and then draw. Like you know <laughs> yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like yeah. nothing crazy, you know? Like <laughs> and if you want to do more than that by all means mm-hmm. do it as long as it, you don't let the drug do you yeah um but I, I found it so beneficial like it changed my whole mm-hmm. i just um i had one of my girlfriends you know her too um she had her first mushroom trip oh, cool. um last weekend and Ooh. um it was me and my a couple of other friends and you know just a little bit for a microdose yeah and then she was like, oh, I kind of feel like I had like three beers and like maybe smoked a joint. I'm like, that's an accurate description. She's like, I feel very euphoric. And I'm like, OK, would you like a little bit more? And she's like, yeah, I think so. So I gave okay. her a little bit more. And then she started feeling she's like, oh, I like, you know, she was really yeah. getting into it. And she was having um, boyfriend like this guy that she was seeing problems. And mm-hmm. then like she was working, you know, through yeah. that. And we gave her a little bit more. Yeah. And it was great. And awesome. when she woke up, she was like. She's like, I get it. That stuff is awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. It really like brings you down, especially if you're like an anxious person. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, she's constantly. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, I was, I really thought that I was, I still am. Like, I still have one. Oh, well, yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's helped tremendously. And like from that, uh, I was like, 
I've been doing art my whole life, mm -hmm. dude. Like painting my whole life. Yeah, I love your little art it. stuff. Thank That's you. So cool. <laughs> thank you. I've been developing a coloring book, which is oh, like, that's cool. Thank you. Which is something that well, actually I want to respect your time. Okay, cool. Oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> no, we're we're like doing well. Awesome. Um, it, I've been developing this coloring book that I kind of got the idea from something that happened on that like first mushroom trip, mm -hmm. which was I had these little like postcard sized. Uh, like just little white piece of paper that I was mm -hmm. drawing on and then I woke up and I just made a joke they're like postcards from my trip and I'm like a big travel person anyway it's mm -hmm. just like funny to me and then I'm like oh my god I can like turn this into something that would be a great coloring book right? idea right so and it's like because I have adult coloring books <laughs> right <laughs> they're so much fun and they, they are fun because yeah. I can never draw, but I've always liked like art mm -hmm. stuff. Like I go to the museum all the time. Yeah. Like my dad and my uncle are beautiful fucking artists. Oh my god! I can never fucking draw to save my <laughs> life, and I've always wanted to. So coloring books is like the closest. So thing much I've fun, done. right? Yeah. And fuck, it was, it, dude. It's been so much fun to develop. I'm almost done with it. Ooh. I have one page left to finish. Yeah, and then it's done. But the, I'm just doing it in order mm -hmm. of, like, a year span, kind of. Okay. So each page is kind of, like, a month. Okay. And I made candles. That the one, Those bottom shelf that right there that's mm -hmm. hanging, those are, like, the first three pages. Okay. That are on the <laughs> labels. I'll put them, oh, yeah, I can see them kinda. here next to my head so you guys yeah. can see what we're talking about. Um. But I don't know, like, I just having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. And I would love to color it. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I love it. I you love can sell it. it on, like, Amazon. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. Exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload it to Amazon, and I'm going to also, like, buy a bunch and, like, fucking have them here. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. But um, I forgot where I was going with it. Oh, it was, like, I, I had never called myself an artist, like a mm -hmm. professional artist. Okay. Until Is that just because you haven't made money from it? Or like that's a fucked up dumb shit. It's like I went to design school. I have two degrees in this shit. Like, okay. like I did this professionally. So you're an artist, you just uh, having a hard time accepting. <laughs> yeah. And I mean like I've called myself a designer, but like yeah. and well, I've sold pieces of yeah. art well, of mine. It's, it's obviously an insecurity in your career. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a little bit because if that's what you've always done, then yeah, you are an artist. So why don't you think you are a real artist. I don't know. Well, now I do. Now you do? Okay. Now I do. Now yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm are you an artist. I'm an artist. <laughs> yeah. I'm an artist. Are you going to get it? Yeah. Um, I, I, now I call myself an artist. Good. But like, it took so long, long to, to do get that. there, but it feels really good. Yeah. I really want to enter my art into Art Basel this year. That would be fun. The December um, Art Basel. In Miami. Yeah, fingers crossed. Now you guys have to hold me accountable to that <laughs> shit too. <laughs> but, but you're putting it out, you're manifesting yes. it into the universe. Yeah, that's yeah. so important. Like, I, I usually do this at the end. We can do this mm -hmm. right now. We'll like <laughs> jump around. Like, I do an accountability segment and like uh, me... First of all, that's a, this is as far as I got in my coloring book. So yay to me. Like, things are uploaded. <laughs> I've been posting about them on social media. Like I said, I was going to pat on my back right now. <laughs> um, uh, fucking, uh, I don't remember what I was saying before because now I'm high. But uh, accountability. We were talking about the, the coloring book, how you're going to be held accountable for um, Art Basil. Yeah, dude. And like that, that I'm I want to do it. So if I'm a real artist, I'll like get my Yeah. Shit have you thought about like doing like an exhibit somewhere? Because they have so many yeah. like little galleries and stuff. I was thinking of like just emailing some shops around and seeing if they would like hang my art. Yeah. Tattoo shops, maybe. Cafes. Yeah. Tattoo shops would be a good place for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like, um, well, it's always hard to tell, too, like, what's owned by a corporation and what's not, you know? Yeah. Like, like, which are the little mom and pa shops? Because yeah. those places would absolutely do that kind of thing. Or you could do, like, kind of, um, I guess I don't want to say, like, a Banksy thing, but you can make, um, yeah, yeah, have, yeah. like, a sticker with a QR code or, yeah. or whatever and then just stick them all over the city with, like, some cool picture. And yeah. people will be like, okay, what's this? I used to do that for a show that I won't mention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, I'm yeah. doing that for my podcast and, yeah. and, like, just stand-up shows and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a great way to promote yeah. stuff. 
so easy, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think like find it shouldn't be hard to find a gallery space in New York City. That there's would, like, so many, especially in like Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah. has. I remember I did a, a comedy show. It was like an adult themed mm -hmm. uh, comedy show, and like all the pictures were, um, you know, of naked people and stuff like that. And then they had strippers. It was super fun. Mm. Yeah, but that um, sounds like a fucking blast. It was, actually, it was very fun. I felt right at home. Uh, yeah, it was super cool. But yeah, there's tons of little. Um, little galleries you can even like do pop-ups like yeah. a pop-up gallery kind of thing they have freaking pop-up bars i didn't know that was a thing my That's buddy he does cool. like he's like he's a real mixologist like i think yeah he's working for jägermeister right now which is weird but uh <laughs> <laughs> but he makes like all these really cool drinks he's like oh there's this pop-up bar on this roof i'm like what's a pop-up bar how do you even do like how do you even so, get so, that to so happen? it was at like some apartment building or whatever and it was just like five specific drinks so they were um old fashions and man Manhattan's, but with tequila. Ooh, and they were really fucking good because I like tequila. I so love I was like, tequila. Yeah, so I wasn't mad at. It. I'm like, I didn't know there was a pop up bar. Yeah, but you could do a pop up art show. That's fucking cool. I was thinking about doing that for like too much content stuff. Yeah. Um, actually, if you're listening and you have a space, <laughs> let me know. A, if you want my art up in that shit, and I'll ship it to you. I don't give a fuck. And also, if you are in New York and you have like a place where i can do a pop-up podcasting um mm, yeah. i have some ideas that i would like to share so hit me up um <laughs> <laughs> but anyways about Aaliyah, is there yes. anything that you would like to uh, like be held accountable uh, for accountable for or Ooh. manifest <laughs> and then we're gonna get into some uh, comedy shit um well i've been I've, I've been doing really well holding myself um accountable um like, I, I remember tweeting something, <clears throat> excuse me, in, like, the beginning of the year where I'm, like, I'm going to be extra petty. And then I'm, like, because, <laughs> you know, I do, like, just tweet, you know, I yeah. like, that's how my, my Twitter persona is or, or whatever. But all of a sudden, like, there's been a bunch of shit that I've wanted to tweet it, and I haven't. <laughs> Like they're in my drafts, and sometimes I'm like, no, like I deleted a bunch, and I did, I did send one. I didn't mean to, it was on accident, <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck, and then I deleted it right away. So, I'm but gonna... it kind of felt good for that one second. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I was like, oh shit, and then I was like, oh shit, ah. and then she I was really like, said that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's I get that a lot. They're like, you really did that on Twitter. I'm like, yes, yes, I did. Good. Um, I'm all for fucking speaking your mind, but I get it. You have to have yeah. some self control. I had to get off Twitter for 11 years, and. <laughs> I'm dead ass. Twitter is my toxic boyfriend. So I'm back on now, but yeah. now we're back together. Yeah, now. I've been I've been better just like, you know, promoting stuff and whatnot. But yeah, mm. so I've been um holding myself accountable to not um to not let certain people and how they treated me um get to me to to where you mm -hmm. know I, i'm gonna talk about because then it's still because yeah. that means then it's still affecting me and i'm like but it's not affecting me but i also like to tweet petty shit yeah. so it's like that fine line where it's like am i doing it for comedy reasons or am i doing it because i still have feelings about it yeah kind of thing so i've been so that's what i've been accountable for that's awesome dude <laughs> that's actually fucking that's something everybody should practice a little bit <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Irish's mom got me a, it was very cute, mm -hmm. a mindfulness journal Ooh. Uh, for Christmas. Yeah. And like, that's, I literally just started using it like a week ago. Dude, I love journaling. Like once a day, it helps so much. I only even like comedy. I always say this, like comedy saved my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason why I jumped into doing any comedy was mm -hmm. because I was trying to write a book. Mm -hmm. And so like writing more was something I was trying to now like keep mm -hmm. myself more accountable and if I'm gonna have a coloring book I wanted to like be able to convey my ideas about all of the things mm -hmm. so like as a comic is that something like journaling mm -hmm. obviously does that help like is that something that you might do oh like, yeah well I mean I do the journaling for like mental health but yeah. then I have like free writing sessions for li yeah. like when I'm doing comedy you know for like five ten up, up to fifteen minutes you know, where um, I do like to write freehand sometimes, but also, like, obviously, I'm a faster typer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll just, like, type out just, like, a couple of pages of just whatever. I'm thinking I have a lot of, like, 
never thought little, to time it. That's a great idea. Yeah, because that way, because a lot of times we be like, oh, I need to write for like an hour every day. It's like start out with five minutes yeah. and then build up from there. And so once you start getting into the habit of it, you're going to want to do it more. And I do write like so much more because of this. Yeah. And I do it like right after because like I'll get up, I'll, I'll meditate. You know, I have like a little therapy app if I don't have my actual therapist. Um you know, I work out, you know, or, or I go to the gym and then I make writing a part of like my morning things. Like mm-hmm. even before I shower, like I always make sure that I write for at least 10 minutes. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So some of like the shortest jokes that I have, like were paragraphs, <laughs> <laughs> just paragraphs. And I'm like, oh, we could take it out these. And then there we go. That's a joke. <laughs> That's one joke. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Check. Did comedy today? Check. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think like, ri- like I don't know. I've always liked writing. Um, mm-hmm. I like, uh, blah, 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 blah. um, I like excelled at it when I was younger, and mm-hmm. then I had a teacher fucking make me self conscious about it. And then yeah. I ended up liking it again in college. Well, that's good. But like, then I keep like falling off about it. Yeah. I suppose it's like anything else, but. It kind of is. Um, there's definitely moments when I don't want to do it, mm-hmm. you know, but that's the difference between uh, motivation and discipline. Yeah. Like self-discipline is something that I have been um, battling with my entire life because I've never yeah. really been too disciplined. I was always like the kid that was like a grown up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, so I, I've always just kind of been able to do whatever I want, whenever I want. Mm-hmm. And I've always been like the exception to every rule a lot of times. And as fun as that can be, it is also, <laughs> you know, it's fucked me yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. So I definitely try not to um, practice that. Are you, do you have siblings? Um, <laughs> uh, that's complicated. Um, so <laughs> I was going to ask if you're the oldest um, of any of the variations. Well, on um, my, with, with my dad and my mom, um, I'm the only I'm their only child, oldest. Uh, with my father's marriage, um, he uh, I had a stepbrother and then my half brother. He passed away, and then um, and he's complicated because he's technically a brother cousin too. So oh no 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 wait Brian's not a brother cousin, but I do have a brother cousin. Oh, um, <laughs> so Brian very Brian, Midwest. Yes yeah. So um, he's the one that I have a uh, tattoo on my arm. I basically mm. raised him. Um, and then on my mother's side, I have uh, two stepbrothers. I think one one is younger than me. I think w- the other one, um, I think we're around the same age. Oh, and then my father's side, I do technically have a stepsister to the woman he's currently married to, even though they haven't been together for like 10 years. So mad siblings. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then the brother cousin happens to be the child of my father's brother, my uncle mm-hmm. and my mom. So my mom hooked up oh, with two shit. brothers, right? You know how dudes always like, I oh, want to hook shit. up with twins. Okay, well, my mom didn't hook up with twins. <laughs> but she did end up getting pregnant by two brothers. So I have a brother cousin and he's adopted out. Oh um, my God. Obviously, because they didn't want to make things confusing <laughs> for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that, I feel like uh, if you're taking care of anyone, like, yeah. I, you know, I feel like I was always taking care of my friends. Yeah. Or, do you, do know you know have I mean? siblings? Like, are you an only child? I am my mom's oh, only oh, child. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, only child. But and I'm then, like and the oldest have... of my cousins. Yeah. And like, the, I am a lot of big sister to a lot of people. Yeah. You know yeah. I, I am mean? the oldest, like, out of all my cousins yeah. and stuff like that. Um, on my father's side, my mom's side, I think I may have some, like, I don't know. Obviously, yeah. it's weird. We do have family from Kentucky, so who knows? Like, <laughs> I could be in Brett. I have no idea. That's why I probably have a weak chin, to be honest. I mean, like, <laughs> I was just a round face. My mom's gonna hate that I said that. <laughs> You're not in Brett. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> we got <a> brother cousin. <laughs> yeah, she gets real mad when I talk about that. <laughs> Whoops! Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, we'll fucking move right along. We're like, what? I guess what brought you to like where you are now? Like, are you happy like where you're at with like what you're doing in comedy? Is that like what your main like form of art is that you would say? Like, oh, what? I don't know. Um, you got mad shit going on, so like, I, I don't do. want to assume. I, don't I just assume. only know. I know you from this. <laughs> um, yeah, I've definitely. Um, I've been focusing more on comedy, especially now that things yeah. are more open, and I also had to deal. Um, I didn't really. Deal 
deal with the fact that I had cancer. I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah, bro. That's a big fucking deal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone's like, it's a really big deal. And I'm like, isn't that big um, of a deal? And everyone's like, yeah, it's kind of you a big made deal. It. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Because uh, I like, because I didn't really have to go. Th- like, I had a surgery, and that yeah. and that was about it. And I never wanted kids, so I was just like, it's, it's kind of cool, but. Uh, <laughs> But it's also like the thing of dealing with death. Like I've never really been afraid of death. And I've always been like, oh, I'm like, that was pretty close. So it's Mm. like, so now like I'm definitely because I got lazy, like, um, like because financially, like I'm I'm really secure. So like I just got lazy with the comedy thing and then with the pandemic Mm -hmm. a a little bit. And so now, you know, I'm back to producing um, a couple of shows I have like. The weekly show on Wednesdays mm-hmm. at Route 66 Comedy Club. I'm doing Job Breakers again at the stand. Oh, yeah. And then um, Zodiac Killers with uh, mm-hmm. Chanel Omari. Yeah. Job Breakers is with uh, Jax Deloso. And then the podcast, like I stopped podcasting for a while. So I got, um, and I do like this one. And mm-hmm. this is something that obviously I'm, I'm good at <laughs> sex and I'm good at drugs. <laughs> and I'm good at telling people what to do. Uh, <laughs> so I'm asking you, you know. I'm like, she seems like she knows. <laughs> I do. I know. Know too much to be honest. <laughs> like the more you know, like life does get harder. Like, like it's just the like the more uh, I learn, the more I'm like, wow, I'm dumb as fuck. Yeah, like, that's you know? another thing too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not as smart as I like to think I am. We watch so like uh, growing up, I wasn't really like allowed to watch like certain things on TV. Mm-hmm. Right? So I never really watched like South Park. Oh wow! And when we started dating, it mm-hmm. took us three different apartments, but we finished South Park start to fucking end. <laughs> Okay, and my brain by the end, great show. I love it. Hilarious. My brain was fucking melting by yeah. the end. That's all we watched <laughs> fucking through. Like, if, uh, there was like a, the Patrice documentary and like three other movies that we watched. Oh, and yeah, that was it. South Park. I've <laughs> yeah. done that before. I'm like, I'm just going to fucking watch all three seven. But it's like so seven. many seasons. But mm. anyways, I felt like my brain was melting and I'm like, okay, I need to now watch like documentaries like often. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I've definitely done some yeah, shit where I'm sure like, oh, I need to go read a book. Yeah. <laughs> I should go read a book or like go to a museum or something. Yeah. Or like so. when I'm listening, like not like necessarily like listening to music too much, but like if I'm like out and doing shit, I just always have my headphones in, mm-hmm. even if I'm not if I don't have anything going on, mm-hmm. like I just like to seem busy, you know? Oh yeah, even if the battery's dead, <laughs> yeah, just so don't people don't talk yeah, to me. Don't talk to me, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like, I'm, instead of like listening to somebody make fart noises sometimes like on a podcast, like I'll just, I'll listen to like an audio book or something like that. I've been like listening to so many audio books oh, yeah? over what you, the past. What have you um, recently been listening to? Right now I'm listening to uh, H.P. Lovecraft's like the complete, collection or whatever he writes like wow. sci-fi stuff i guess like oh, he was cool. he was really popular like i've always heard of him but i'm not really into sci-fi yeah. stuff but um i was like fuck it you know let's try something new and yeah. i'm like i like a couple of the stories i'm almost done with it. it was like 51 52 hours long oh wow i think yeah so it's a lot but yeah. i've been reading um reading um like a book a week kind of through yeah. audiobooks but i also like i do try to read um like a paper book like yeah. one a month Awesome. Um, just because of the ADHD, like when I was younger, yeah. if, if less I'm really into it, like mm-hmm. I could finish a book in a day or in two years. Like yeah. it really depends yeah. on how. I finished the subtle art of not giving a fuck in three days. So yeah, I was on audiobook, granted, but yeah. that's all I fucking had on like for mm-hmm. three days. I'm like, everybody needs to listen to that. Not giving it. Yeah, well, I've always not giving a yeah. fuck. So <laughs> I need to learn how to give a fuck a little. Yeah, <laughs> it was more like kind of like boundaries shit yeah like, boundaries are so important i know <laughs> and like especially i mean foreign people don't i'm foreign i yeah. say this i mean there's just the boundaries do not exist at yeah. all <laughs> <laughs> you know well, it's also different cultures too different yeah. like especially if they they come from a different place they were taught yeah you know they they, yeah. they do have boundaries they're just way different than of what course. american boundaries of are. course and yeah. like i respect that like of course you know and like who know I would probably do the same shit. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But like you need to know that that will bleed into adult relationships and like friendships and like the, as you grow and mm-hmm. like if you and career shit and like if you don't know how to say no or uh, you're not paying me enough to do mm-hmm. that, sorry. Like 
you're not gonna get like to yeah, the next level. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to do that. Change is very yeah, uncomfortable, but, but it's always it. yeah. Once you do like that first couple of times that you do like set a boundary or you do ask for something that you know you deserve and you actually get it, mm-hmm. you do. You're like, oh shit! Yeah. Uh, like it's a great <laughs> feeling. It's yeah. a really good feeling, and then you're like, yeah, this is the way. That it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. You know? Because then you're validated. But, you mm-hmm. know, and then people like, really do show their true colors. Like when you set a boundary and mm-hmm. like expect more of some people. Mm-hmm. And like if they can't meet you, like, uh, well, you have your answer. Yeah. You know? And that's always hard to, you know, and it does hurt a lot. But, and that's why a lot of people lack boundaries because that Mm -hmm. pain of just not having that person there even though they were shitty Mm -hmm. you know it it still hurts but once they're gone you realize like and and you're over that you're like you feel so much better and then you actually see because those feelings and stuff like that are gone and then you actually see them for who they really are like i've been i've been banging my ex-boyfriend like a retard (laughs) Um, (laughs) but (laughs) but like those feelings are gone. You know, like, yeah. I know who he really is. It's just that, like, it's yeah. hard for me to find people that I could trust to have sex with hey, man. occasionally. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not really looking for a relationship, so. Yeah. But, like, that's your boundary. And yeah. You know what it yeah. Is. And, and like, 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 maybe once a week, once every two weeks, I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you, and then it's okay to, like, be like, hey, I actually am not comfortable in this is like the an uh, updated negotiation. Yeah. yeah. And it does you know? like relationships and that's how it should be. And they say, I believe it's like every seven years people like lose friends. You, you know, like yeah. you only remember like a hundred people in your life, I th- I think. Um, like or a hundred names, even yeah. though like you you know, people have thousands of friends on Facebook. Like my Facebook, I have three hundred and sixty eight people. <laughs> all the way from high school to present. Like mm-hmm. there's just certain ones yeah. that you pick out throughout your yeah. life that just stick around more. And some of them like I barely, you know, talk to anymore. I can absolutely delete them. But yeah. Um we did see each other. It's not not that like you're not gonna be friends with certain people mm. anymore. If you see them random randomly, you're yeah. like, Oh hey, it's great to see you. People take the socials way too. Popular. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> but um but a lot of times some relationships do just fall off and, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with either of you. You guys just didn't, you grew in other directions and yeah. that's okay. Like it's normal. That's a part of life. Yeah. <laughs> I also think it's okay to put up a temporary boundary and like mm-hmm. know what like a healthy amount of time is for whatever it is that you're asking. Like mm-hmm. a friend the other day, I was like, you can shut off your Instagram comments. Like, you know, that, right? You can just like shut them off like mm-hmm. for as long as you want, Yeah, you know? And then when... You feel like people are nice again you and like your, and you shift your mm-hmm. <laughs> following maybe or whatever the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. Like you get through this period where you're like, all right, bring it on, Internet. Yeah. Then you're well, yeah. yeah. Well, when you feel that way, I've definitely yeah. I kept my comments off just because I don't give a shit. <laughs> and a lot of times it's really annoying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it does help with like algorithm of stuff. Course. But there are ways like uh, I know for my account, um, you have to be following me for for mm-hmm. you to be able to comment. Yeah. Um, I have like I have a whole list of words that are automatically blacked out. Oh, uh-huh. dope. You can yeah. do that? Oh, yeah. On Instagram, yeah. Like, if you do, like if you don't want to see, like, bitch, cunt, you know, whatever words you oh. don't. Porn. I love you. Like, I have I love you blocked out. <laughs> <laughs> emojis. You can have certain emojis. Straight up, if someone tries to comment that, it won't Mute go. Mute it. Yeah, it won't go through. Oh, shit. Um, you can also do that on Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I, because I always get random. To, I'm about ready to fucking block out the word hi, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, and hey. Because dudes who only just message hey, I'm like, what? Like, how long did it take you to write that compelling fucking message? Because <laughs> I have all my messages turned off, except for on my Facebook, because of, yeah. uh, of comics need to get a hold of me or whatever for mm-hmm. shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just, it's a, such a pain in the ass. I would totally shut off my comments on Instagram if it didn't fuck with, like Instagram already hates me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I get it. <laughs> I would never be seen yeah. on the fucking app again, so I just leave it. But yeah, I yeah. have, yeah, you can have a bunch of words muted out. Yeah, well, that's, fu- that's, uh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, makes it easier. Mm-hmm. Um, And I think that like, it's fine to like, figure out how long a ha- habit takes, what, 21 days to develop? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. 
uh, if you do it like consistently in a row. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if like for 21 days you just had your comments off, like what fuck it ever, like mm-hmm. you did something else with that time. And yeah. like, okay. I don't even really read my comments, yeah. the ones that I <laughs> do. It's fucking get. dumb. But I, like, I'll scroll through to make sure no one was an ass, like, yeah, creepy or, I do the same thing. or an asshole. And then if it's, you know, nice. And that's the thing, yeah. too, is that a lot of times on social media, you tend to pay attention more to the negative things because you want to block that out instead of like the people who are actually cool. Mm-hmm. And that is um, definitely like, I've switched from doing that, like, paying less attention. To like the douchebags and stuff like I'll like I always try to like people's you yeah. know tweets or yeah, yeah. you know comments that it's not like I love you like if people are like I love you you're beautiful I, I ignore you I'm sorry you weird me out and you need to get the fuck off the internet yeah <laughs> for real <laughs> you really do yeah guys that do that I'm just like mm, just from don't. being in porn and stuff I'm like yeah. oh you guys need so much mental health yeah, <laughs> yeah. so much <laughs> it is hard for dudes to uh, I think accept that they need Uh, oh well yeah (laughs) yeah men in general especially when it comes with that a lot of times too dudes just think with their dicks like they're they haven't learned to like evolve like socially and culturally as as, like as much as like women have and stuff like that it's just like i I think you're pretty i don't care (laughs) i don't i don't care like tell me something I haven't heard one trillion. I mean, yeah. Yes, and sometimes I look in the is- mirror every day. Yes. Like- <laughs> Thank you. No, because I mean, yeah. Sometimes it is nice, but it does take away from when somebody that you want, you know, to hear that from. It does yeah. kind of take that away. Where like if someone I really like and they're like, "Oh, you look great today," I'm like, "Shut up." You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. So it does. Um, yeah, hearing that all the time. Like, men are like, "Don't why you should be grateful," but I'm like, "No, I don't." I'm like, there's one of me and millions of you. Like, let's <laughs> use some common sense and deductive reasoning skills. Yeah. That's the worst fucking gangbang ever. Like, I don't <laughs> want to deal with that. Nope. Thank you. <laughs> Remove and block. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I'm good at blocking. I think I have yeah. almost 100,000 people blocked on Twitter. That is fucking A lot hilarious. of them are, are spam accounts, though, too. Yeah. Like, uh, this girl, whatever. Yeah, Porn I, time, they would, like, buy people followers to try to, like, get their accounts taken down. So I just, I have this like app or whatever that would just block that block like yeah. robot spam accounts. Yeah, because most porn like anyone an adult like Ugh. they have like hundreds of thousands of followers. Sometimes all of them are just fake. Bots. Like yeah, like you it can feel, tell. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I feel so bad. It's like you have a hundred thousand followers, but three likes on most of your tweets. Uh, <laughs> we can see that. <laughs> yeah, they, no. A lot of them times though they didn't know. Like I didn't know like my porn account that I had. I got up to like. And this was obviously like 2009, um, like over like 60,000. And then all of a sudden, because I still have that's my job breakers account now, like over time, like all of them. And now it's like a solid 15,000. I'm like, that makes more sense. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The numbers add up. (laughs) It's like they were all fake. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> now we know that we're no. real bitches. Yeah. You know? I love that. But like, yeah. Hold on. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, we'll do like a couple more minutes. Now. Okay. Wrap up. Um, so yeah, you are running all these shows now and you're doing your podcast. Yes. So where can people come see your shows? Um, like where can we buy tickets and ooh, shit? Ooh. Uh so I have a weekly Wednesday show with Larry well it's Larry Bay's yeah. show. Um I just I book it and do everything. <laughs> come he to pay- Leah's show. He, pay- <laughs> he pays me well. Um, <laughs> which is always nice. So that's uh every Wednesday. Uh, doors are at seven thirty, seating is at eight PM and it's at a place called Route sixty six. Mm-hmm. It's uh forty six. Stone Street um, down in the financial district really cool place um, it's been really fun like the vibes have been really good we've been packing it out um, mm-hmm. it's been super great and then uh, Jawbreakers is going to be the second Saturday of every month at midnight cool. um, with Jack Del Oso and um, and then Serial and that starts the that's coming back uh, April 9th mm-hmm. and then April 21st is our first Zodiac Killers Ooh. With uh, Chanel Omari, it's where uh, every month it will be like that sign. So April will be Aries. Shout out to Aries. Aries. Um, I see all you mad bitches out there. (laughs) I have an Aries moon, so. (laughs) Well, (laughs) welcome. (laughs) I get it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and that's at 10 p.m. And um, 
I think it's on my website. I don't have the ticket link. I mean, it'll be in Any um, links April. that you have, I will put in the description of oh, this podcast. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you go um, aliajanine.com. It will have it in my schedule and all of the uh, ticket links and stuff will be there. And then social media. Um, the Aaliyah Janine on Twitter and Aaliyah Janine on Instagram. Hell yeah, dude. And guys, please subscribe to this channel. Yes. Um, subscribe to this podcast, House Ho Podcast, and follow me on Instagram, Ani underscore Moosh. Um, you can check out my website, uh, animushmedia.com, where you can buy all like candles, my art that I have up there. I have an Etsy store. It's by Moosh. Everything's fucking, if you just search Moosh, it, you'll <laughs> probably find me. <laughs> but everything's always linked on my social media. Um, one thing that I just wanted to like put out there that has nothing to do with this podcast, but... Um, Sam Buck's podcast, Bucked Up, was just sampled on a Conway album. That I love Sam. And <laughs> like the most recent one, it's called Greetings Earthlings is the album. Mm -hmm. And the song that Bucked Up is sampled on is uh, Earthlings, which I think is so fucking cool. That's it's amazing. like the whole like thing of the album. Yeah. And um, it's like two minutes of his podcast, like him and Conway talking. It's fucking unbelievable. And I'm so That's, proud. Yeah, I met him a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I met him a couple couple weeks ago he was fucking hysterical he had me dying oh my god dude he's great he's great he's the best um he was like the first podcast that we like Aww. that he trusted us and like yeah. you know we've just grown so much from there so like yeah that's it's awesome. crazy so go stream that right now like go bu buy it like i don't want just go listen to it do whatever <laughs> support sam go support conway's new album um and the jay skis who's also on that same track was also on bucked up so like it's full circle yeah. everything's really fucking cool so very proud of the team. Very proud to be your producer, Sam. Um, <laughs> and you can also find my candle club, the Liddy Committee on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Roche. Um, if you want to get a candle a month delivered, free shipping, all that shit, I'm giving a free gift Ooh. with the next month's candle. And keep in mind that you'll be seeing more sneak peeks of that coloring book on my Patreon as well. So I've been channeling it all there. So go see. <laughs> and I added two more tiers. So if you don't want that fucking $30 tier, there's the $3 one. <laughs> <laughs> Every dollar counts. <laughs> yes. Um, and before we go, I guess the last thing that I'll ask is like, what is, what is some last like piece of advice that you would give someone who doesn't know where to start with accountability oh. i know that's a lot like i know that's not that's a, like a quick question it's not quick but like i wanted like, uh, mm -hmm. to tell someone how to be more accountable for their actions yeah or, like, like how, how do you go about that um, well, with something like that, you can't really beat around the bush, so yeah. to speak. You can't really be passive aggressive about it because um, then you're not really being accountable. Yeah. Um, the best way is just be like to tell them why you're saying what you're saying and be like, I need you to do this for me, for our relationship, yeah. friendship, parent, you know, whatever relationship yeah. um, to heal or, or to move forward. Yeah. Kind I, of thing. I feel like... Uh, the people I get along with most mm -hmm. are honest. And I've like said that my whole life. Like, yeah. I don't care if you think you're gonna like hurt my feelings. I would rather you be yeah. straight up with me. Yeah, same. Absolutely. Then like <laughs> fucking, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. nobody likes fake ass hoes. No, yeah. That's why your friend smirkle, circle is small. Smirkle. Yeah. Your smirkle is small. Your smirkle is small. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of this fucking episode. <laughs> Keep your smirkle small. <laughs> <laughs> fucking stoner <laughs> no yes man but thank you Aaliyah Janine for being on yes now, thank so. you so much for having me on it was fun hell yeah and catch you next week hoes peace oh there's a right there <laughs> bye <laughs> yeah. yes thanks for having me